Welcome back, especially to our subscribers. You guys help make a difference. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down there. It helps really make a big difference in getting our projects done for you. Um, I was at a big box store yesterday picking up a 50 amp circuit breaker that I needed for an EV project that I will be doing soon. And while picking up this Eaton, I came across this Eaton product. This is a GFCI receptacle with nightlight. Now I have a regular receptacle that has a built-in nightlight, which is quite nice. But in addition to this being GFCI, which would protect you from being electrocuted, uh, it has a photo cell to control the LED nightlight so it'll turn off when there's light. And it's tamper resistant, which means if a little one or even you should stick something in one of these prongs, there's a uh, very little chance that you'll get shocked because it prevents that from happening. And when the product reaches end of life, it actually just disables itself. So it's always safe to use and you know when it's no good anymore. And the reason I bought this GFCI is to replace the one that's here because while well, this is also a GFCI, it does not give me a nightlight. And in this garage at night, it'd be nice to be able to find the switch and the receptacle without having to turn on all the lights. So having a nightlight here would just be a great way of spotting this. And uh, of course it turns off when we have daylight, which is nice. So that's gonna be our project for today is just taking out the existing GFCI and replacing it with one that has a nightlight. Since I will be using a contactless probe, I first bring it in here just to make sure that the probe is working correctly. And now I will go and switch off the circuit to this outlet, and then I'll be able to test with this probe knowing full well that it works correctly. Circuit breaker to the garage has been switched off. There's no indication here that means that there is no power to the unit, but of course, I'm just going to verify that. Okay, so we have no power, so it's okay to open this unit up. Using a 3 16 inch flat blade screwdriver, we remove the screws for the cover. Next, with a number two Phillips screwdriver, we remove the screw from the top and the bottom that hold the receptacle outlet in place. We pull the receptacle forward and we're going to test. We verify that there is no power anywhere in the box and we're okay to put our fingers in there. We expose the screw and I'm using a quarter inch flat blade so I can release the terminals. Since this was back wire, it just pulls right out. If we had side wired, we'd be wrapping around with a shepherd's hook. This makes deinstallation and installation fairly easy. And fortunately, the new receptacle also has this feature where you can go in either way. And I remove it, load, neutral, and then ground is the last thing I take off. This is the back side of the two GFCIs. This is the one that I just removed. And you'll notice that there's this yellow tape that goes across terminals. This terminal here is what they call the line terminal, and that's where the power that's coming in to the unit. And if I had other outlets downstream, then they would be fed off the load side. Now on this unit, I'm not sure you can see it, it's, it's actually printed upside down, even though these are both facing the same way in the front. All the text on here is upside down. So let me turn it over. So hopefully we can see this. So Eaton does it a little bit different. This is the line. And there's no tape on the load side. 
So you just got to make sure that you wire the wire, the power coming into the unit onto these two terminals and then power going out to any receptacles downstream get wired here. In our case, we only have power coming into the unit. But for us, the big difference is that the way the unit is orientated, we had line up here at the top, whereas with this unit, it's going to be at the bottom. So don't confuse that because if you put the line on the load, it won't work. Now we're ready to connect the ground wire. Then making sure we know where our line is, which is here, we're going to connect the neutral to the white side, and then the black will connect to the brass looking. And we will leave the load side alone since we have nothing coming in there for that. And we're going to come in on the back, so we're going to use the back connection as opposed to the side connections. We make sure our connections are tight by pulling on them, make sure they don't slip out. Now we're ready to install the receptacle back into the box. And I leave it a little bit loose so that I can make any adjustments when I go to put on the wall plate. Put the receptacle in place, we check our fit. Everything looks good so we're okay to attach screws and we'll finish mounting the wall plate. With the power back on, we see the amber light indicating that the unit is tripped and that's the way it's delivered from the factory. There's also this, which would be red, which would tell you that the unit is no longer operational and it's out of service. And this is the photoelectric eye for the light. So let's reset. Amber light goes out. We have a tester here. Two yellow lights indicating that everything is wired correctly. And we test both parts of the receptacle. So we're okay with that. Now let's see if our little LED comes on. There it goes. So, and you see it actually dims depending on the amount of light that's hitting the photo cell. So this will be a nice addition to the garage. It'll just help spot out where this unit is so that we can either hit the light switch or plug something in. Just a nice little safety feature for the garage. If you found this video interesting or useful, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, join the subscription team. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.